you can connect the Line 6 Helix to many different wired playback systems available to us today. Connecting to a PA is a common usage of a fully modeled sound. The XLR outputs are available in mono or stereo, with stereo presets summing to mono when using only the left XLR output. A channel strip on a mixer normally has a microphone preamp with an XLR port. Microphone preamps are expecting a mic level signal, quite a low level signal, and the job of a mic pre is to boost it to line level. Some channel strips have a quarter inch line level input or a switch that changes the XLR jack from mic to line level. You can use an instrument cable from any of the quarter inch line level outputs from Helix to the line input on a channel strip, but without the extra cold wire that a balanced cable provides, the signal may be susceptible to interference or noise. Phantom power is activated at the mixer to power condenser microphones or other equipment that may be used. If phantom power is activated, chances are that your Helix signal will be degraded if it's using its XLR outputs to the mixer. This will not damage your unit. Some mixers have phantom power on a per channel basis while most do not. If phantom power can be disabled, your Helix will be happy. If it cannot be disabled, Phantom power blockers or a direct injection box can be used. A DI box is a specific device for taking an instrument level signal via quarter inch connection and outputting a mic level signal via XLR. It is safe to send a DI box a line level signal. If you want to connect your Helix to active monitors, the XLR or quarter inch outputs may be used. You'll want to make sure you are sending line level to these speakers because that's what they'll be expecting. Some have built-in mic preamps so you can send them mic level and some do not. If you want to connect your Helix to a PA's mixer while also connecting to your active monitor, it's a good idea to disable Helix's main volume knob for the specific output going to the mixer so you can control the level of just your monitors. Sometimes running into a real guitar cabinet is preferred. This bypasses the cabinet, microphone, and room reflections associated with a modeled cabinet and gives you the feel of a real cabinet in the room with you. The Helix's only amplifier is the built-in headphone amplifier and is not designed to drive a speaker cabinet. For this, a power amp is needed to send a powered audio signal to the cabinet. There are different kinds of power amps that will react differently to the Helix's amp models. Solid state and class D type amplifiers are typically designed to cleanly output what is fed into it and benefits from a modeled power amp within the full Helix amp models. Tube driven power amps act more like their counterparts found in tube driven guitar amplifiers and impart their own power amp characteristics to the signal. These benefit from the Helix's modeled preamp models, especially when these tube power amps are driven to saturating levels. Alternatively, a guitar amp's power amp input, or effects return, is a way to slave your amp as a power amp, bypassing the physical amp's preamp. Just watch your volume levels. If you're doing this, it's a good idea to have your output controlled by the Helix's main volume knob or have your output block's level parameter in check. You're plugging into a wide open power amp, likely with no volume control of its own on your physical amp. I learned this the hard way. Power amps are all different and can expect different input levels. See your power amp or guitar amps manual for details. If you want to use a power amp and guitar cabinet as well as a fully modeled sound into a PA system, the easiest way is to place a send block before a cabinet simulation that will be fed to the mixer. The send block will route the signal before the cabinet sim out to your physical cabinet. Running a cab sim into a guitar cabinet can sound very bad. If you want to use a physical guitar amp without an effects loop, you can plug one of the Helix's quarter inch outputs into the main input of your amp, but be sure to set that output to instrument level, 
as that is what the amplifier will be expecting. Be sure to have the main volume knob all the way up, as to not attenuate your signal. This way you can use the helix like a pedal board of effects. Running amp models this way isn't recommended, but some people use preamp blocks in place of drive pedals with some success. If your guitar amp has an effects loop, you can put its preamp into the effects loop of the helix by connecting your amp's preamp output or send output into one of the helix's return inputs. And send that signal from a quarter inch output from the helix back into the power amp input or effects return to have that sound come out of the speaker. This is called the four cable method where you place two devices into each other's effects loops. In your signal chain, your effects loop block becomes your preamp from your physical guitar amp. Your effects into the input of the amp can be placed before this block, and the effects you'd want to run in the effects loop can be placed after this block. You can also bypass your physical amp and substitute in a modeled amp or preamp. If your amp is foot switchable with a standard TS or TRS quarter inch switch, you can insert an appropriate quarter inch cable from the Helix's EXT amp jack to your amp's quarter inch foot switch jack and assign it to a foot switch with menu, command center, select the switch you want and rotate the first encoder to EXT amp and select your portion of the cable to control. If you have a Line 6 speaker with the L6 link, the L6 link may be used with an AES or EBU cable. That about does it for this video. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments related to connections and your Helix. Thanks for watching.